I think we're definitely live now. Brilliant. Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll try again. I was a bit concerned that we weren't live, but I think we were. But, you know, I messed it all up with technology. But we're definitely live now. So um, let's say hello to Darren. Darren's the founder of Motion to Profit. He's got a um, little <sighs> presentation to show us. Um, it's all foamy now, isn't it? All this technology messing about, but it's my fault. So Darren is the owner of Motion to Profit, a video production company, and he's going to talk to us about using video within your pet grooming business or your pet business. It's not something, I was saying to Darren, it's not something that I see very often with pet groomers using it for advertise. So um, I think it's really important that we consider it and know why it's, why it's good for our businesses and what the benefits could be for using video within our business. Obviously, I use a lot of video in these groups and, um, you know, it goes down really well. Uh, I want A to Z to be a trailblazer. So we're going to get together with Darren and um, produce some um, professional adverts that we can put on our Facebook pages, on Instagram and um, our website. So that'd be really exciting. So, Darren, welcome again. <laughs> I don't know if you want to uh, start your, your screen share again and introduce yourself. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Neil. Um, right, yeah, let's share the screen. Okay, is that working all right? Yeah, you can see the screen share all right? Yes, we got you, we got you. Fantastic, okay, so I'm sorry about the big photo of me right there, um, but that is me, and like you said, I'm Darren Austin, and I'm the owner and founder of Motion to Profit. Now, we do video production, like you say, but we also sort of look at the video marketing side, so imagine video production is obviously producing a video, but then it's, the more important question, I suppose, is what you then do with them as well and, and get the most out of them. So we do both, and uh, our website is motionsprofit.com. So we're going to try and look at it today a little bit more uh, about the dog grooming uh, business. And, and you're absolutely right, Bill. It, you know, it's not something you see used very often at all, uh, is video in, in, in dog grooms. And I think that's that sort of shows that there's a good opportunity there. Um, <laughs> So I suppose the first question is, and what I imagine a lot of people could be thinking is, well, why, why would I use video? Um, you know, what is it? And, and essentially, the research is, is that businesses that use video, they tend to grow 49% faster year on year than companies who don't. And, you know, you ask yourself why. And I think that the reason for that really is because video is such a great way of engaging your target market so anyone who's a potential customer i think video is is by far the best way to attract your business to them so let me just stop sharing a minute Bill, uh, i'm talking so i i believe that you want to get your message out there yeah? and traditionally we do that through like flyers through um text through images and stuff like that Whereas now with, with the sort of coming on of technology, certainly in the last 10, 15 years, video is by far the best way of doing that. We've got so many social media platforms out there that everyone is on. Um, and what a great way to get your message out. We engage with video so well. You know, if you think what you do in your spare time, you might sit down and watch a movie, you might go to the cinema. Uh, you know, we, we do, we just engage with video so well. So that that's why I think business grows so much quicker if you've got video because it's easier to bring people around and bring them to your way of thinking and, and to, to bring them in as customers essentially. So that Make that forty nine that forty nine percent is that um, using video in your social media or is that actual just using video to promote your your business? So both. So what, one of the things I want to talk about today uh, is video marketing. Uh, and I'm going to go over, in fact, let's move on to that now because that was kind of the, the next thing. So let me go back to the screen share. So video marketing. So in, in my opinion, Bill, you get two types of video marketing. This is the way that I see it in motion to profit, okay? So you, you were saying that you, you want to do some video content and you want to draw people into A, uh, A to Z and, and, and really sort of get your message out there. And, and, through doing that you want more customers right you want yeah. more people through the door so i break video marketing down into two sections attraction and conversion 
Now, if you're a fairly new business and you don't have much of a following on social media, um, you know, and you really are in the stage of just trying to get your message out there, then what you want to be doing is you want to be building a load of content. You, you want to be um, really finding out what your customers are thinking and answering that within a video that you can then post onto your social media. So that's um, building, that, building that no like and trust, isn't it, that we talk about? Uh, yeah. So you, you've preempted what I'm going to say next, obviously. <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely that, Bill. So yeah, what we're trying to do through our content uh, and you might hear of this quite a lot with something called content creation, is we're trying to find out what our target customers or what our potential customers, should we say, want to know, and then we're showing them that. So I'll give you an example that's specific to grooming. So as you know, Bill, I've got a little puppy at the moment, and we are thinking about taking it out just for shampoo. You know, she doesn't need a haircut, so she's got really thin hair, but, but just for a shampoo, a bit of a clean-up. She's a puppy, she's a mum rather than mud. So we're thinking about taking out the groomers. Now, um, I've never used a groomer before, and I will look through social media. I'll look, you know, I'll, the first thing I'll do is Google dog groomers in my area, and then I'll check them out, do a bit of stalking. And the reason for that is because she's a family member, right? Like dogs are a massive part of our family, and, and we care a lot about dogs. So I want to know, I'm confident that the person I'm going to send her to is going to look after them and, and I've got no doubt that, that every one of them will no doubt but for me I just want to be able to see what they're doing and make that decision now so what are you, what, are you, what are you going to be looking for um when you're trying to find your your dog groomer what what are you going to be looking for within their sort of advertising and so uh, what, what what so I think that every potential customer has top three problems Bill, and, and I know that you've done this with, with your business yeah so one for me the top problem for, for my part is um is going to be is she going to be well looked after is she going to be well looked after not just while she's being groomed but after you know I've never sent a dog to a dog groomers before so I want to make sure that when she's not being groomed she's also being played with she's not just being ignored and, and all that stuff and that's something that you could so easily show in a video, almost like the journey of a dog whilst it's with you, uh, just to show the owners, actually, this isn't just about a, a grooming, I sh you know, I don't know the first thing about grooming, I'll be honest, but you know, just about that 20 minutes. But actually, whilst if we've got her for two hours, we, we do this beforehand and this after, and look, she's had a great time. Type thing. So it really is about knowing what your potential customers are thinking what their problems are, what problems they're experiencing with other groomers if they go to other groomers at the moment, and really just addressing that by making short videos to post on your social media. And that will attract people to like your pages, uh, to like your YouTube channel, whatever it is you're going to do. And as a result of that, people will start coming through the door because they like what you do. It's that simple. Cool. So, the other, the other side to video marketing is conversion. So we've, we've attracted all these people in, we, you know, we create the content, like we say, we've built that no like, and trust, which is a good step. And now what we want to do is we want to take them from liking our page to actually bringing the dog into the shop and paying for your services. So lead magnets here, this, this is probably more, this probably doesn't suit other this probably suits other businesses more, but essentially what, what a lead magnet would be, it'd be offering some something, you know, to, to, to get them into the shop. So, for example, what you might say is actually we do, uh, if you buy nine grooming sessions over 12 months, we'll give you the 10th for free. Some, something just to generate that interest. So we might do, uh, like you've already said, video adverts. That would be to convert people into customers. Mm -hmm. um, we might do, uh, you know, a big offer. So, so we've used the attraction. We've built up a Facebook page. We've now got maybe hundreds of followers that are potential customers. We now want to create a video that's going to get them to come into the shop. So that's that's the conversion side of it. Is that um, how do you? So yeah, and how do you uh, monitor that conversion? I suppose you, it is, that's, that's one of the biggest problems that you see, especially when you've got a, an actual shop and it's not an online business. But with the actual shop, you should notice it by, by having extra customers. You, you will get a general sense on your social media when you run a bigger group, 
how well that's going, how well people are responding. And as a result of that, you know, say you've been doing it for six months, you should see a, a good increase in, in just in footfall and extra customers through the shop. So um, it's always a bit harder when you're not an online business to, to measure these things, but you should just notice it. And, and by building that fan base locally, it will work in your favor. You know, you will increase that footfall because you're answering people's questions. I always um, sort of ask people, you know, when, when someone comes and uh, rings your shop or comes into the shop and they want to book in as a new customer, it's always encouraged, obviously, to ask them where, where did they find where did they find out about you? And then that gives you an idea as to where you want to be focusing your marketing, doesn't it? It does, mate. Yeah, it, it, it does. And um, we'll, we'll come on to that later. I've got a bit of a thing that I'm going to go through with you. Um, to give you an idea, so I live on an enterprise zone. We're in Cambridgeshire, so we're not far from London. We get a lot of people moving up from London, saving themselves a bit of money and buying houses up here. And a lot of those people have pets. But, but what we find here is that on this estate, and there's probably about a thousand people living here at the moment, not many of them are from here. So, so when they want a service, for example, dog grooming, they'll go onto our Facebook site and ask for recommendations. Now, as you know, recommendation is a fantastic um you know the, one of the best ways to advertise is word of mouth if you do a good job and they tell someone else that you're going to get that customer hopefully mm -hmm. now what they tend to do is they tend to go on a group and ask now what you'll probably find is that if if i go onto this group now and i say i'm looking for a good dog in the locally they there might be four or five people give four or five different answers i'm going to go on to each of those social media profiles each of those dog groomers and see who I like more and who I like more will, will determine subconsciously on who is answering the concerns I've got in my mind about taking my dog in. Um, so, and, and you're absolutely right, you know, we said about word of mouth, the good thing with video is, is it doesn't, you can be so creative with it and one of the things I strongly recommend uh, is that people um, find their really happy customers and ask them, you know, would you do a video of us or, or would you mind, you know, giving us a review uh, if they give a review, would you mind doing a video? Because uh, that is invaluable. If, you know, good feedback is well worth recording. And once you've got it in the video, you can add your logo, add your branding, and that is really something that you've got for life. So you don't just post it once, you might post that every six months. Just keep putting it out there because people like to see good reviews. Uh, it really helps people choose you over your competitors. That was something that I um, I considered and uh, haven't had the guts to do it yet, but it was to sort of stand outside our shop and uh, sort of take a quick video of the customer going in with like a before of the dog, before they've had their groom, and then capture their sort of um, reaction and their, you know, their thoughts when they came back out of the shop and then put it into like a little video video review. Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. And that's, that's the thing is, is you know, you, you want to capture all those happy moments uh, and you put it out there. Like, I was talking to my wife last night, strangely, and I, I'm going off subject a bit here, but we were talking about social media. <clears throat> People put all the happiest parts of their life on social media. And as you've probably seen yourself, you know, you might look at someone else's social media profile and think, God, their life's amazing. Like, they're always on holiday or whatever, because we always want people to see the best of us, yeah? It's no different as a business. We want to be capturing all those happy moments for our customers, for the dogs, you know, all those happy moments and just put the word out there. And people will respond to that. People will see that and think, oh, these guys are great. I'm going to take them to them. You know, and as you know, once you get that extra footfall, once you get to the point where actually you can't really get appointments, that's when you, you, you've got options to put up prices or whatever it may be. And, and that's the power of video. And that's why companies that use video well will grow faster because they're making it all about their customers, they're showing them the right thing, and, and they're growing as a result of that. And as a result of that, they'll put their prices up and that helps to do what they need to do. So yeah, it you know, it really is um, a great way of doing it. Video, not everything needs to be video. You don't need every post to be a video, but definitely, in my opinion, it needs to go in there just because it engages people so well. So you kind of make, about, uh, make your customers a fan or make make the customers famous, if, if that makes sense. 100%, mate, yeah. Yeah, obviously ask them first because not everyone likes being on video. We, we, right. we have that quite a lot. But, but a, lot, a lot of people will. And, 
and the good thing with dogs is um, people are really proud of their pets, aren't they? They're like, you know, they're like our children. We love to show them off to people. So, so you will get your customers out there who would actually quite like to be on video, you know, and they'll have their dog on video and, and you, you can show the before and after, which I always think with grooming is quite powerful in itself because the dog comes in really scruffy and it comes out looking lovely and clean and really well groomed. Um, but like I said, one of the, I, I, I checked through a few people from your group and had a look at their social media and one of the things that I come across quite a lot um, was just before and after, before and after, before and after photos, one one after the other. And I thought to myself, for me personally, thinking about dog grooming with my puppy, like that's nice and it is nice to see and I would definitely put them in there, but just one after the other, I think, well, I, I expect that you know not being horrible but if i'm taking my dog to the dog groomers i expect it to be groomed as a bare minimum like if i you know if i'm paying that money the dog's going to get groomed yeah. what what will what will drive me to go to you isn't the fact it's going to get groomed because if it does, doesn't i'm probably not going to pay the, the, the what will get me is how well my dog's being looked after you know is she is there an apprentice there playing with the dogs and that's just their, their job or you know you know just I want the dog to be happy. I want it to come out well. Um, I, I want the, the groomer to be insured. That's another thing for me. You know, if something goes wrong, I want to know that she's safe and she's going to get the care that she needs. Things that you will have in place as groomers, no doubt. Um, but it's just sort of pushing that out now, I suppose. I think, um, um, I think what you're, I think what you're saying, and subconsciously, you're you're looking for that content. You're looking to get to know that groomer before you actually go. And use them. So you want to know, you know, I, I, I'm so as you. I look through people's um, Facebook pages, and I don't actually know who's who the owner of the business is, or or who's going to be working in on on your pet, or I don't know who the team is. You know, there's no pictures because I, I suppose everyone is quite. Uh, not all people like being on the camera or or being on video, but if you don't know when you walk through that door and you meet and you're greeted by someone, do they know who that is? prior to going in there you know it's that, that no like and trust again so when you phone up and you speak to someone on the phone if there's a video of you talking on your Facebook page you might that customer might recognize your voice and straight away it connects that makes that connection with you doesn't it but there's so many pages out there where it's just like you said photos before and afters photos of the dogs but we don't actually see who runs the business <laughs> absolutely and, and that's that's Spot on, you know. We, we, we're putting. We, I want to know who it is, and I know you've heard this before. It's human to human, like you know. I, I find it so much better when I know the person behind business because really, you know, when you're putting that much trust into people with your dog, uh, with my kids, with the nursery, I, I want to know that they're going to be well looked after. So the fact that it's a family-run business that they love dogs, and this is the story of why they love dogs, and this is how they got into grooming and, and why they love it. You know, that's really powerful and that really connects with people so well. Um, I just want to quickly go over there because it's, we always say marketing and marketing is a word that you've probably gone through school hearing if you've studied anything to do with business, you know, and, and people, but I don't think people really, um, I just want to break down what marketing is because uh, I think people will listen to it but they don't really understand it. So marketing is such a wide thing. It, it's not just this or that, that it's, it's a number of things. So marketing is, is the action that a business takes in order to promote or sell a product or service. So, so literally anything you do as a business to sell uh, or promote a product or service is marketing. So that, that could be so many different things. And, and video marketing is essentially just using video to do that. Um, and what I would say is anything you do with marketing, make it about your customers. Because the other thing that I see, Bill, and, and you, you could be right, um, is that a lot of the time I see people trying to market their business. So putting things out on social media, and it's all about them, their business, what they do, that this for us, and that's us, us, us. That, that's not going to work. Your customers, um, putting it bluntly, they, they, they don't care about the business. What they care about is what they're coming in for and what they're paying. So if you make your marketing about them, about helping them and the outcome for them and, and the dog, what they care about, then I think that 
that is always so much better as marketing. Certainly when we take on work with people like yourself um, and others is that we, we always try and find out more about the target customer in order to, to make the marketing so much more relevant. So what um, what kind of um, video would you use in a pet groomer? So you were talking about um, maybe a video of the shop, so a video of what the, the shop looks like, uh, maybe a video of a dog being groomed or being bathed. I'm, I've certainly seen a dog being bathed before on Instagram, and it's got loads and loads of um, followers and people saying, oh, I'd love to see my dog being bathed. I'd love to see... That doesn't necessarily have to be um, a professional video through someone like yourself, but then you could also look at like professional video being taken to run an advert or something like that for your pet groomers. Yeah, so we've, uh, we've spoken about this before, haven't we, Bill? So you're absolutely right. Um, for content creation, to pay someone like myself, you can be talking about so much money that it, it needs to be worth it. You need to get your return on what you're paying. So you're absolutely right. What I recommend for most businesses is that you actually do most of this yourself. And then when so your day-to-day -day stuff you can do it and we'll come on to this later because i recommend some uh, i've got a budget of 250 pounds and for that you can get some fantastic equipment that will enable you yourself to make some brilliant videos and once once you get to know this equipment it literally is a case of do, do you mind if i video the, the puppy whilst it's in no of course not brilliant go to it get it boom on done and it's that simple we can make it really easy um when you want to bring in someone like myself, I think for this type of business is when you're going to start spending a lot of money. So when you really want to, maybe you've just taken on a new number of staff, you know, you've grown quite well, but you just want to get to that next level um, and you want to run an ad because running ads is, is a lot more complex than people realize. People don't respond very well to ads because they're quite aggressive. Um, they're not, you've not taken the time to build that, like you say, no life and trust. So with an ad, what you're doing is you're really trying to force that on them a bit more. So it needs to be done very well and needs to be laid out in the right way. That's where I'd recommend you bring in someone who um, probably understands the, the complexities of it a bit more. Um, or, or like a, a proper promotional video, maybe where you, you might want that next level of um, quality, then at that point you might consider um, someone too. So maybe if you were going on major class and you were, you had a stool or something like that, and you wanted to have a video playing, you might be worth investing then. But, but absolutely for the the day to day content, the day, you know, that capturing all those happy moments within your business, just do it yourself, and we'll go on to that in in this video. Let me go back to the presentation if that's right, Bill. Yeah, I've got something else I want to share with you. So when it comes to creating the day-to-day -day content, um, I this is this is my analogy. It's pets. So I think that you need to make it professional. It needs to be engaging and it needs to be targeted. Okay. So imagine with with uh, with with marketing, um, if we put something onto our social media, quite often someone will come across that video and that could be their first impression of our business. So I always think of social media and what we're putting on there as like dressing the front of our shop. Does that make sense? So I think I'll put there first impressions count. So if if I want to find a dog groomers, like I said earlier, I'll probably go onto Google. I'll type dog groomers in Cambridgeshire, which is where I live. Uh, and then I'll check out the, the, the top pages that Google gives me. So that might be, let's say, five companies, yeah? If they've got a really rubbish video on there, then that's probably not really great. But if they've got a really good video that looks good, it's sleek, and it really hits what I'm trying to figure out about the company, then that's going to go down really well. And I think media needs to be professional. It's like dressing up the front of your shop. Yeah, it, the first impression a potential customer has of your business is often going to be a video that you might have created three months ago. But it's but they come across it on social media, um, and then the engaging. So what we want is to draw customers into our business, like we've said. That's why it needs to be engaging. It doesn't want to be necessarily about what you as a business owner think. It needs to be very much about what your what your potential customers are thinking, mm -hmm. and um, we we need to make it valuable to come what we are creating as well. You know. 
that's why, as you know, Bill, a, a lot of businesses, what they do is they create free content. So, you know, you, as a dog groomer, you might say, actually, we're not really getting people coming just to cut a dog's nails. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a video showing people how to cut your dog's nails at home. Just as an example, I don't know if you would ever do that. I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, we did it. Those... Last lockdown, we did it. Perfect. Yeah. So, so why did you do that? Let's... Well, why did our you... first... Our first reaction was like, why do we want to show people how to cut dogs' toenails? Because uh, they'll just go, go out and do it themselves. But um, quite rightly so, people did try and do it, and then they realised that they couldn't do it. So they wanted to bring the dogs to us. <laughs> they panicked. People like me were like, oh, yeah, right, I can do this. And then I get the clippers, and I get the dog's paw, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to cut her. I'm just going to pay for someone to do it. It's so much better. And that, that's the thing. And, but even if they do do that, what you've then done is you've taught them a skill that they will really appreciate. So when the dog wants a proper shampoo, they're going to know your business. And they, you know, and that, that's, that's what I'm saying. It, being valuable makes it engaging. Yeah? If you give people these little hacks on how to make their lives easier, they will respond well for you. And no doubt, Bill, you probably have people come into you know your business and say, "Oh, I watched that video on how to cut the nails. I was really impressed. So I thought I'd bring them in for a groom or whatnot." Um, right. And then targeted is the last part of our pet uh, analogy. So social media, we know how big social media is, right? Facebook. So Facebook has 2.4 billion active users. So that's, that's around, not far off half the world's population. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the UK adult population is on Facebook. Instagram's not far behind with a billion. Uh, YouTube is massive. Um, if you've got young children like I have, you will probably understand why YouTube say that more people now, young people, are watching YouTube than they are terrestrial TV. Is that big. The future generations of people will be more likely to watch YouTube daily than that they are the, the terrestrial TV that we sort of grew up with. Definitely. And TikTok is very much up and coming. And I know you don't like TikTok, Bill. Uh, we disagree. <laughs> um, I think, you know, as a videographer at heart, I think TikTok um, is, is, is massive. Because, I, like I said, video engages so well with people. Um, you, on Instagram, uh, do you know Reels? Uh, where you have the, the videos come up. That yeah. essentially is what TikTok is. And Instagram created that because they're worried about TikTok taking over. So tell me about so, TikTok then. Right. Convert me, convert me to TikTok. So if, if, if my dog, is my customer going to be hanging out in TikTok? So if say my customer is um, between 25 and 40 years old, are they going to be on TikTok, do you think? Somewhere, yeah. 100% yeah. somewhere. I'm 13 and I'm on TikTok. <laughs> my best friend goes on TikTok. Now, what I don't do is go on there to look to buy things. It's, it's um, the problem with TikTok is that if you did create a TikTok page, geographically, there's no way of knowing where these people are. And we were talking about this the other day. I come across a dog room on there who, um, you know, they had about 100,000, it was either 100,000 or a million followers. It was a ridiculous amount of followers. And I said, that's all well and good. But if, I, let's say I live in Cumbria and I've created this amazing TikTok channel and I've got a million followers, but only five of them live near me in Cumbria, then it's not paying off as well. And that is the good thing with Facebook and with Instagram is that you can be much more targeted geographically. And as a dog groomer, even a mobile dog groomer, you, you've got to be fairly limited as to how far you want to go, you know, unless you have a load of clients in an area and you're willing to drive to get there. <coughs> but going back there's there's great ways to build up uh bill as, as you well know so um i think we're stri live streaming now into a facebook group right yep. so uh facebook groups are a great way to, of um, building up uh, a, a, a target market if you like um the the beauty of it is that what you do is you solve people's problems in that group and they will start to like to and as a result, that hopefully visit you as customers. Uh, you've already said about adverts. The beauty of Facebook adverts is you run Facebook adverts off, but you can run them across Instagram and Facebook all in one because Facebook own Instagram. 
Um, and more importantly, what you can then do is you can tell Facebook to target people within a certain area. So you know, like, yeah, you need to you need to make sure when you're running Facebook ads that you're using the demographic um, tools that it gives you, so that you're not. Like, it's the same as TikTok, isn't it? You don't want to be running a Facebook ad and targeting 16 year old or 18 year olds that don't actually have um, have any pets because it's a waste. You're wasting your money, isn't it? Or um, I saw another one, like again, like TikTok. I saw a, I was presented an advert in front of me, and the groomer was like um, up north somewhere. So again, th that that might be a Facebook mistake, but if the demographics aren't being used, and that's again, it's a waste of money because I'm not going to travel up to Birmingham to use a dog groomer from Kent. Yeah. So fa Facebook, yeah, that that's the beauty of Facebook, and Facebook will make mistakes, but. You know, if you if you pay a relatively small amount of money, Facebook will probably show what you're putting it to for thousands of people. And mm -hmm. um, so if it gets ten wrong, then so be it. That's not really the end of the world. As long as you've set the, the area well, you know, you always can get people. For example, who uh, mum and dad have a dog, and they're at university somewhere across the country, but Facebook thinks they live where they've put their hometown down. But yeah. that's just like you're not going to beat that. Um, most of your ad will go to ge geographic area and, and you target that. And that, that's the good thing about paying for the ad is that you can target your local area within a driving distance of where your business is based and really hit those people. So that you don't hear many people, you know, talking about ads are, you, you, you need to get advice if you're going to run ads so from someone like yourself and, or myself but, and really get to know you know, really think about what, what you're going to get out of it because what I would say about ads as well is that you really want to be looking at the, the results side of it, not just running the ad, if that makes sense. You want to make sure you're getting value for money and, and that you're doing it right. And don't boost posts. No, don't boost posts. Go for an ad. <laughs> don't um, boost posts. You have, no, you have no control over boosts. They will just go out to anyone and everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm running an ad and I'm, if I'm paying Facebook to put put a video in front of someone, I want to be able to tell Facebook the type of person to do that to. I don't want to be um, saying to it just I just send it to anyone. I, I want to be able to tell them exactly who is going to see that ad. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Right. Um, do you think there's anything else needs to come up? I, I appreciate video marketing is quite a um, it can be a really complex subject and funnily enough even though we've just been, probably been waffling on for the last half hour um i am creating a new series myself so you know uh, add me as a friend on facebook we're going to be creating a new series called no ball video marketing um where we're really going to try and break it down into easy steps to follow so people can do their own video marketing um and and get it right because the one thing I will say, the, the, the problem with any form of marketing, be it video marketing or anything else, is that it can be quite downhearting when you don't get results. When you're pushing something you're really passionate out there and no one's back, it can be really down, it, you know, you can really get you down. But it doesn't have to be. What you need to understand with marketing is that it's a long process, yeah? It, it takes a long time to get your business where you've got a really loyal following. Uh, and you just need to be consistent and you need to keep putting it out there and people will come eventually. Um, and bear in mind, if I post now something in, so let's say on my business, I, I, I make a post, the person that I want to see that who's going to become my customer might not see that for six months. Because the other thing I see, Bill, and I'm sure you're the same, is that sometimes people post a video onto Facebook and then a week later they look at it and they're like, oh my God, it's only got 90 views. That, that's ridiculous. Like I spent hours or, or even a whole day making that video and no one's done it. Go back in a year's time and see how many people viewed it then. Go back in six years' time, see how many people viewed it then. And it, it's crazy. I did a little video. It's always there to be seen, isn't it? It's always present and um, it's always going to be uh, available for people to look at. So. So I did a video for a food, food van near me um, a few months ago, uh, six months ago now. Uh, they're called Picassos. They're, they're a really good little food van. And we did them a promotional video. And um, within, uh, I think it was within 
I think I checked it about a week later. They've got about four and a half thousand views locally. Um, it's drummed up a whole load of excitement. You know, they were like, wow, this is a really cool video. Look at the food you do is amazing. It, it, it showed the video really well. Uh, the food really well in the video. But I went back and when I was doing my own marketing and trying to figure out how successful my videos are, and I looked back um, just a few months ago at the beginning of the year, and it got 10,000 views at that time. Yeah. And it just, it, it's crazy to think that over that six month period, when you first post it, you're always going to get an initial um, amount of people that will view it because you've just posted it. But don't, don't underestimate how many people will check you out. So for example, with this food ban, we're in your area tonight. Oh, let's have a look at them. See, they're like, oh, look, they've got a video. Let's watch that. And that's the power of video, really. And just don't get downhearted. Keep doing it. Keep being consistent. And, um, you know, it will pay in the long run. But it is a long game. So if um, you said you had, you, you'd put together a little um, basket list of kit for about £250 if people wanted to do a little bit of videoing for themselves. Yeah. Now, we've done this, Bill, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've kind of done this together. So, yeah, I've, put, I've, I've tried to keep it as a reasonable budget because £250, I think, you know, is an amount of money where you're not spending this money, you're investing. You're investing in equipment to, to create this content that will hopefully will drive our customers. So how many customers would you need to make about that money? That's what I always think. So we're going to start. So what I've done, because I'm an iPhone user, um, I've been a bit biased here. Mm -hmm. I have an iPhone. So I'm going to go through. It's, it's 2021, right? My camera, let me, let me show you. So this phone my phone this camera is amazing yeah this is the latest iphone uh, but even iphones that are now four years old and it's the same with samsung's they have fantastic cameras on them and when you're creating that everyday content so this camera here that you can see in my background and my drone cost cost that camera takes me quite a while to set up i'll go out we'll do what we need to do um, and it, and, and it, it's amazing, but that's two and a half grand just for that camera, plus the lens, plus everything else. This I would have bought anyway, and it takes brilliant images. And I actually use it for a lot of my own content because it's just a case of get it out of my pocket, plug a few bits into it, which I go on to, uh, and play. And that's when you're running a business, like a grooming business, that's what you want, isn't it? So. Yeah, you want to do you... um, spontaneous videos and, and then also plan a bit of content as well. So I did one the other day where I did sort of a walkthrough of um, the shop just to show people what the shop was like. And then that will come over to you at some point to be edited into a like an advert. So Yeah, which is great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and that, you, you're so right. That's what it is. It's about being able to just put it out and crack on. And, and it you know, my TV is a relatively new TV. It's called a 4K TV. 50% of the TVs in the country won't be 4K, they'll just be full HD. Your phone can shoot in 4K, which is the maximum resolution that my family TV can take. The phones, cameras, are, are amazing. Um, so don't underestimate them. And I strongly recommend using them. Um, if anyone is interested, then um, I've done... Uh, you, Bill, haven't I? I've done you a guide on how to set the right settings on your phone, um, and I can send that to anyone that, that wants it. Um, it will just show you how to set the phone up well to get the best from it, um, and it's just about fiddling around with the settings. It's really easy to do, uh, and I've, but I've just done like a step-by-step um, -step process guide. Yeah. So, yeah, so there you go. So we're, we've already got the camera, and we've not spent any of our uh, budget. So assuming you've got, uh, I think it was iPhone 8, which is now probably about six years old. They had 4K cameras on them. So, yeah, so, uh, and Samsung are fairly similar. So sound. So you, I see, especially with pet-based pet business, I see so many people go on about lapel mics. Uh, and you've probably seen this as well, Bill. So the lapel mics, just, just to let everyone know, are the ones that you clip on to your clothing and then the cable runs often inside your clothing into a recorder that will be on your pocket. And 
it's um, and then you can then sync that with the video and, and it all works well. I, I just think it's a lot of faff, I'll be honest. I, and I'm, I'm really not a fan of them. I have uh, a really good lapel mic, funnily enough, with the recorder here. Um, I don't use it that much, I'll be honest. Um, unless I want audio only, I don't tend to use it. Um, I much, much prefer the this one. And I think you've got this, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I've put I've purchased this so that um, I can just attach it to uh, the phone, and then it will help me to do all my sort of video content that I need, that I want to put out. So yeah, so um, as you know, with this, you you can see this is for the iPhone only. So to, you know, if you've got a um, Samsung, you need to look at another option. There, there will be the equivalent out there. But you can see here that you've got the it connects straight into your iPhone power socket you literally plug it in and then you can use it it's that straightforward um, and that's what i love about it so what this is as well is it's a directional microphone so what that basically means is is that where it points is where it listens so if you've got noise like i always have in my house with, with a two-year-old and a six-year-old coming off in some distant room somewhere then the mic probably won't pick that up unless the the mic's facing that way so it's a directional mic and it will only record where it's pointed and I, I love that i think that's great so that's 66 quid at the moment on on amazon um you can literally just copy that uh put it into amazon and it will come up this is the picture from amazon and the um it actually comes with a what i call a rat you should put it <laughs> you put a rat over it to to uh, a fluff a big fluffy boom thing isn't it i, can't, I don't know what it's called but it's um yeah. it stops all the wind and echo and stuff like that as well isn't it that's right. It, um, let me show you. Um, I've got mine because, funny enough, um, like I said, I like to use my phone to record my quick, my just my normal content. So this is the microphone. Um, this is how it plugs into your phone, and then yeah, you get this, which is basically a, a windbreaker. So if you're recording outside, you definitely want to be using this. It just basically stops that wind noise from getting in, into the mic. Uh, but yeah, it looks a bit like a rat. Right. <laughs> um, brilliant. So that's, that's what I recommend for sound. Um, and again, that's just for ease. If you've got a customer come to the store, they're a really happy customer, and you think, I'm going to get a video of this. If they've, they've agreed to it, um, brilliant. Grab the phone out of the pocket, get that off the desk, plug that into my phone, and I, I'm almost ready to go. So that's that. That's your microphone I recommend. Uh, there are limitations to that microphone, it, um, but yeah. You know, I recommend research, I think, to make sure it suits your individual needs, obviously. Uh, but that's just what I recommend for most recording. Uh, lighting. So I find um, I find lighting one of those things that people just massively overcomplicate, Bill. Um, people, you, the problem with lighting is that you, you, could, you can go out and you can spend hundreds of pounds and to be frank, you won't have much more than what you would have spent if you'd spent 30 quid. Um, my lighting that I use uh, in my shoots, which is professional studio lighting, still isn't that much. I've not spent thousands because the, what you get for that extra money, in my opinion, is just not worth it. And I guarantee you, your customers won't know the difference. So um, what I've done uh, for lighting, I've recommended just a basic ring cam uh, and it's just it's got the you've got the different uh, sort of colours of light. Uh, you you know you've got this clean white light with with, with a yellow tinge to it. Um, but this comes with the um, phone holder uh, and the tripod, and it's thirty quid. So you know it's basic, but it will do the job. Uh, and it takes half a total of around ninety five pounds. I don't think there's a lot more to say about lighting to be honest, Bill. It will just bore you. So you. You could um, so you could go into your shop on a Sunday with your own dog and set up your um, camera, your microphone, and your tripod and your lighting, and then do a video of you just grooming your own dog. They, you know, customers won't need to know that it's your own dog, but and then use that as a promotional video for your Facebook page. You know, showing people how you groom your own dog, how you wash your dog, how the dog's washed, the care that you take, the attention that you give, and then. You could even do like a time lapse if you've got a fluffy dog. You could even do a time lapse video of you clipping and styling the dog as well, couldn't you? 
You could, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you could. Um, the, yeah, there's so many options out there, and, and you're right, you can. And, and the good thing with this light that I just recommended is it's got the tripod, so you can literally set it up, press play, you, you've got the light. But if you're going to be grooming in your grooming spot, I know you've got um, your, your grooming skills down in Kent, so if you're going to, you've got some really good lights in yours, right? You've got some really clean, crisp lights. You, in your groomers, um, you're, you're not going to want to add a lot more light to that. So then why spend the 30 quid? So if your groomers is a bit dark, the, the windows are quite small, maybe you're in an old building or something like that, then probably buy the light because it will just give you that little more space. But one of the things that I do as well um, is I use things around the house. So if I'm shooting in a house, say, and I've got the person that I'm shooting sat there, I'm not going to want to put one of the massive studio lights up because we're in a confined space where I've got the way like shadow. I use a lot of lamps and stuff, you know, because lamps look natural, uh, but they give us the light, which is what cameras need to take good images. Georgina's um, asked, um, how can you avoid getting um, the circular ring light reflecting in the dog's eyes when you're taking a photo or taking a video? Is that just all about positioning of, does it, does it have to be right in front or does it have to just protect, project out? Yeah. Um, uh, if, if you're getting that reflection, obviously it's all to do with where the light is. Uh, I see this quite a lot, especially on social media where someone's got the ring light right in front of their face and it's literally there. So you see it in their eyes. And, and I would just say, look, um, I would, <laughs> when, if I was videoing like this straight on, then I wouldn't have the lights in front of me. I would move them off the side. And what that does is it creates a bit of a shadow along one side of your face, which is actually a very natural, uh, that's, <laughs> it's actually better that way, believe it or not. So what I would recommend, it's harder with dogs because they, you can't tell them to look forward, but try moving yeah. the light off the side. And you know what, don't, you don't have to use a ring light. If, if you can, you know, have the lights on, have a couple of lamps on the round, get, get the light into the area and, uh, and just move the ring light right back just for that extra bit. Cameras need light to take good images. Video is basically a, a number of images in quick succession. Um, the more light you add, the better. The, the benefit of using a phone as well, Virginia, is that phones are really good at figuring out um, your settings. So with my camera, I have to take into consideration the amount of light and the shutter speed all sorts of things to get it right the phone will do all that for you so if it's a little bit darker in there then the phone should adjust itself to still keep a good image um so yeah just just have a play around with your light trust the phone to do its thing um and yeah contact me if you need to and, and uh, maybe we can have a zoom and talk it over live from wherever you're filming <laughs> yeah and there's um you know there's apps you can get as well which will make a sound or so to, to attract the dog's attention, you can um, make a sound in a direction and so the dog can look away or look towards you or depends how, how technical you want to get, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, my lab, unfortunately, she's not with us anymore, but, uh, you know, we used to have a lab and, and I used to have to stick a treat um, on, on, you know, somewhere and say to her, sit, and I guarantee she wouldn't take her eyes off that treat, but she wouldn't go for it either. She was trained well enough to just sort of sit there looking at it, which would be ideal in that scenario. But um, by all means, um, you know, it's, it's hard to give advice uh, like this, but if you're struggling, then contact me and maybe we can have a, a live Zoom as you're doing it and, and I can maybe give some advice over, over that. Right. Um, so, yeah, lighting, I wouldn't go mad. I really don't think if you put a one in front of that, I don't think you're going to get much more from it. So, a gimbal, <laughs> this, I get, I say to people, oh, you need to get a gimbal, and every time, they're like, oh, what? Um, a gimbal, I'm just setting mine up as we speak. If, you, if you're moving in footage, you will get a uh, shake. So, what you'll get is you'll get, um, like, a shake where your foot hits the ground, um, and... A, vid a videographer like myself, we use gimbals all the time. And I'm just turning mine on so I can show you what it is. So let me stop sharing. So what a gimbal is, is it stabilizes motion. So 
if if I was walking in from phone, as I walk, I do that, and and that can be really off-putting and, and uh, quite frustrating. What a gimbal does is it just stabilizes that. So this is a gimbal, so we can we can mess around with it as much as we want. We can change it, and what what you do is you essentially move across, and that will be a really stable image. So if you're, for example, you should use movement in your videos a lot and i'll come on to that in a minute and a, a gimbal makes that movement extremely stable and it makes it look cinematic and it will engage with people better as a result of that that the, the ones for mobile phones are brilliant the one with my camera takes ages to balance it's a, it's, a, it's hard work the ones for mobile phones you literally just put it on and job done um they take getting used to uh, don't they, Bill? Yes, they do. But, yeah. But trust me, once once you've done it, um, it's so worth it, and you won't want to not use it. Um, I'll come on to movement in a second, but the gimbal will make a lot more sense then. I, I do recommend the gimbal. Um, I, I, for full disclosure, I I don't actually have this one. The one that I bought is a bit more money. It's about 140 pounds just for my phone. Um, but it's um, DJI and it folds up so you can literally put it in a little bag. Um, but it, these are, this one, you know, is pro probably does exactly the same thing to be honest, it's, and it's a bit cheaper, eight or nine. Um, but I do recommend that if you're going to be filming a lot and walking around, which you will be whilst you're filming, mm -hmm. uh, it will make the footage look a lot better. Uh, and then I think this is finally um, the teleprompter. Now, <laughs> Mine's, still in the box. <laughs> Mine's still in the box. But okay, yeah, you've not used yours yet, but, but you will do, trust me. So, <laughs> everyone, so I, I've worked, so I was working as a business owner the other day, right? He makes 30 grand a month. He's probably, he's one of the most, uh, he's one of those annoying people that whatever he does, he's brilliant there. He's, he's a, I've known him for years. Um, but, the first time in the 12 years I've known him, um, I put a camera in front of him and he couldn't talk. He just couldn't get his lines. He would spent the night there memorizing it. Um, it uh, and I see this from people like myself <laughs> to, to everyone. Does it? As soon as you get recording, people find a time to talk. And, uh, and I don't know what it is, but it happens all the time. There's very few people that will just get it right first time and reel it off. So a teleprompter, the reason I recommend it is, and I recommend it to so many of my clients, is because it saves so much time. And the thing is with you guys is that unless you've got previous experience with making and editing videos, is that when you come to editing, you're not going to want loads of footage to sift through, cut up and, and deal with. Like, you know, you want to make it as simple as possible. So a teleprompter, it basically, uh, so this is the teleprompter here. So your phone can, can go to the other side of this screen and it, it, it shoots through this mirror and you, you wouldn't know when you look at the footage, but it will shoot through the mirror. And then what you do is you get another phone or an iPad and stick it down here on this, on this bracket. And then that reflects the text up so you can read it. So what you end up with is a fantastic footage of you speaking, reading your lines, uh, but you're looking directly at the camera. Um, and when you cannot remember your lines, when they come up in front of you in text, it is the best thing ever, I tell you. It, I can't, it, it saves people so much time. Uh, for the sake of 60 quid, I, I really do think they're worth it. To give, to give you an idea as well, Bill, um, you know roughly how much I charge for editing per day. Uh, you, you could buy uh, a few of those teleprompters for half a day, uh, way that uh, you know work um i i went through the, i had a client the other week who wanted some medicine doing and i had to go through like four and a half hours worth of footage to get a 90 second video out and for me time wise i thought to myself she would save so much money if you had a teleprompter um so i said to her look next time get a teleprompter get it right because when you come to editing however you do it whether you do it yourself or pay someone to do it you um you will 100% save yourself a lot of money and time and effort and misery. So yeah.
Um, Sorry, my dogs are going crazy, but I haven't used it yet, but it's going to be um, more for making videos and, uh, you know, talking to the camera. So you... Sorry, it's just gone a bit crazy here. One second, let me close the door. Yeah, so I want to make a um, some instructional videos, so that's why I'm going to use a telepon to, so I can sort of not lose my lines, as it were. <laughs> yeah, no, a hundred percent. So, yeah, so uh, most of the videos that I make, so if you do follow my page or add me, what you'll find is that I um, most of my videos will be talking and I overlay some mo some movement and, and some other bits with them. Um, a, a lot, the, the benefit, the, the beauty of video, and the reason I think it's so much better than, than text, than pictures or, or audio alone, is because it stimulates so many other senses. So what, what, what I would always do is I would have someone talking throughout, and then I would just put overlay uh, footage through. So for example, if I was talking about dog grooming, I might be talking throughout the video, so you might start with me talking to the camera and then you might, whilst I continue talking, cut and then you'll have your gimbal and you're going around taking a really nice slow, mo you know, slow image of someone grooming the dog. Yeah. And that would look really cinematic and really good. Um, but the teleprompter just, it really structures what you're saying and it comes off so much better and so much more professional because you're not struggling to remember your lines. I really do recommend it. Um, and I'm going to talk about movement more because it, it's where a lot of people go wrong. So <clears throat> with your camera on your phone, you, you have something called a grid, which is it just creates a grid on the screen. It, it doesn't, you won't see it in your footage, but it helps you keep everything symmetrical. Uh, and then what, what I recommend doing is, is just add a movement. Even if you haven't got a gimbal, just, just slowly move around. Whenever you're recording, just try unless you're talking to the camera like an interview type thing just try and add some movement so if you're recording something happening just keep slowly moving around now when you watch tv tonight right watch for movement and you, you won't you'll never have picked up on it but if you're like we're watching this is us and everything i don't know if you watch that um it's a brilliant series highly recommend it but one of the things i notice is that they never just have the camera videoing there's if there's something going on they're always just slowly moving around and that's because we like it subconsciously our brain likes it so much more which is why i recommend the gimbal because it will help you just have slow steady movement around which subconsciously makes the video so much more pleasant to watch i think again this is why um sort of when i do my instagram course i talk about reels and um stories and you put movement into those stories and you put movement into the reels and that's why it catches the people's attention so much more than just a picture isn't it because they're just following it and they they want to see what happens at the end of it yeah, yeah. They, they they definitely do yeah it draws people in and it it just helps it makes it so much more cinematic yeah and and i, I think this right video is about uh, presenting your, what you want to say, yeah. So you might, in your head, you're going to go, right, I'm going to create a video and this is the message I want to get across. And the objective of filming that video is to make it so that the only per thing a person focuses on is what you're saying in your video. So you want to try and take away as many distractions as possible. So if you've got the camera there and you're shaking it, people, uh, people are going to be like, oh, that's, that's a bit weird. And they're not then thinking about what you're saying. So we want to try and make uh, and the same with light, if you're shooting and it's fairly dark and they're trying to focus on something, they're not based on what people are saying. So the idea of video is basically we want to create a perfect environment and we want them to focus on our message, nothing else. And so if you're having background music, and this is one where I see it quite a lot, you want that music to be something that happens, it's pleasing, but they don't think about the music. If you put something really heavy and hard in, they're going to get distracted by the music, which is what you don't want to do. You want them to be focused on what you're trying to tell them as a business because marketing is about promoting and sort of selling your products and services so yeah. that we want that message to go out loud and clear 
we're making cool. time. You know, that, that's the way it works. So we want to be trying to um, use video within our business quite a lot. See if you can um, take some video of the pets that you're grooming, take some videos of the, the bathing and then um, the general area, like your, your shop and promote your shop. And then um, maybe if you get braver, you could then start looking at doing a promotional advert with someone like yourself. 100%, yeah, you, you might, some people, I like, no, no, I can't do video, it's beyond me. Um, I don't like it, it's not for me. Some people will pick up a camera, be quite natural with it. Um, younger people tend to be very good. So if you've got, you know, if you're at my age, you know, coming on 40 or, or older even, and you've got a young one who's 15, <laughs> that I guarantee you, they've grown up with camera phones, they will be good with what they're doing. And once you start adding, oh, look at this gimbal, this is what it does, they'll get that quickly. They're, you know, my six-year-old is great with technology, mate. They're, they're brilliant. So use the people around you, bring them in. And, you know, it's almost like slave labor as well. It's only a few quid. You get a little bit of pocket money. <laughs> I don't even endorse that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah you, could, uh, you know, invest in that little tripod and set that up and do a little time lapse of you grooming a dog or um, the customers love it. I've seen it. I've seen that. I've seen people use it on their social media. I've seen the, the reaction from the customers and they're like, oh, can you do that with my dog next time and stuff like that? And that's what you want is that engagement. Mm. Yeah. 100% mate. And, and that's that's what it's all about is that if you create a video that people like and when you put dogs in videos, they often love it. Um, there's a few things that happen is that if it speaks to that person, they're more likely to click on that magic share button, which means that it's almost like we were saying about word of mouth here. Yeah? If I share something from a dog groomer, my friends with a dog will be like, oh, Darren likes this. Why does Darren like that? And, mm. and they're going to watch that message. And that, that's why video outperforms everything else is because there's, it's, it's a massive success. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's in the hundreds of percent in terms of video gets shared so much more than any other forms of media on social media. And it, that's, the, that's the great thing of it. If I share that, all right, well, probably a bit more than normal on my friends list, but a lot of my friends on Facebook are local because they're the people I've grown up with. So that goes out to more potential customers. Um, and that really is the power of video. But that's why we need that content to be so engaging because then we get more of those shares, we get more exposure and you're not paying for that either. So you're, you're spreading your message around without having to pay for that. Um, I, yeah, I think that there's so much as a dog groomer because you're, you're doing nice work. It's not it's nothing bad about it. People enjoy bringing their dogs in. They love to see the results. So just show off what you do. That's, that's the best advice I can give. Like I said, on our personal Facebook pages, look, if you look at mine, I don't have the bad parts of my life like we all do, the good and bad. I only will ever show off the good. My family, my dogs, my, you know, the things that I'm happy with and the image I want to portray. Our business is no different. Just make sure you're showing all the happy times in your business the happy customers, get the reviews, get them in your videos, you know, just keep pushing that, that happy message and people will respond positively. Do you believe that, that positive people draw in positive people? So you kind of want your business to be positive and happy. So we want, um, to, uh, we want people to go out there and give it a go, don't we? We do, mate, yeah. And, and practice makes perfect. Do, do, and let me just stop sharing. Like, one of the things that frustrates me is that people create something that's semi-decent uh, and they will not post it because in your head it's not good enough and and i, I started off and i said pet uh, professional yep professional but it the most important thing with your video beyond anything else is the fact that your message is right yeah so the fact that you're hitting something that your target customer the people that will buy from you are genuinely interested in and if, if you do that, you're on to a winner. Now, start posting, accept the fact that it's not going to be as good as, as it might be when you've had a lot of practice. Practice makes perfect, and it will get better in time. You'll get more confident on camera, you'll get caught more confident using it. But don't be afraid to post things um, that show your business in a good light. 
Um, Bill, editing is something that we get asked a lot about. This is something that scares a lot of people, especially people who are not tech. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you've got Apple, so if you've got an iMac, an iPad that you use, um, then iMovie is a good for it's a good video editing software. It's quite basic. <clears throat> you won't be able to do any advanced editing, but it will be probably enough for what you want to do. Uh, likewise, DaVinci Resolve is now 17, not 16, but basically DaVinci Resolve, if you Google DaVinci Resolve, it will take you to their website. I think it's Black Magic or something like that. But basically, um, they are a professional video editing software. They're, they're great. A lot of a lot of professional videographers are moving towards DaVinci. Their main product is about three hundred and fifty pounds, uh, but for free, totally free, no charge. They do a really, really good quality um, download, and it, it's a video editing software. And it amazed me how much they give you for free. Um, so DaVinci Resolve, uh, if you've got a PC or even a Mac or a Linux, I think they even work on. Um, but I really recommend them and just have a play YouTube how to how to do this on DaVinci Resolve and there'll be loads of videos about how you do what you need to do and just self-learn really it's not um, I think the problem is a lot of people overcomplicate it essentially if you get it right with the teleconference and everything else it's just a case of going on cutting out the bits that you don't want putting it all together and, and job done it's really uh, don't overcomplicate it. Watch YouTube, and we'll learn. Failing that, um, feel free to contact me, and I might be able to point you in the right direction. Or in some circumstances, we do offer some video editing ourselves. Cool. Uh, right, and then uh, yeah, graphics. So, um, a Canva, I think, is brilliant. Um, I, 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 this presentation was done on Canva. Um, I, I think I really like Canva. I'll be honest. So let let me. Um, I use a lot of Canva, for, well, like the advert that we did for for yourself. I mean, that's that's all done on Canva. You can use Canva for Instagram as well, can't you, to create your posts on Facebook? Exactly, mate. So, so on Canva, what I love, right, is if you shoot your um, video in full HD, which is 1080p, yeah, uh, which is what I'd recommend most people do. Then, then what, what you can do is you can um, uh, you can create um, a, a template and then you can resize it. So you can actually say to Canva, I'll oh, create this in 1920 by 1080, which is the full HD size. And and it, and it will and it, it will just resize it for you. You can have a little play, make sure so. So that is now full HD. It was 4K before, so it actually fits perfectly into. Oh, it actually fits. Sorry, excuse me. It actually fits perfectly into your video, um, and that's what I love about Canva. And it, you don't have to pay for Pro. It's seven pound a month if you do. Uh, I'm a real fan of it, and you can then create skills to put onto your video and just build them in. I, I do that. Um, sometimes um, yeah and I've done that um, quite a bit with some light with some um, recorded videos that we've done sort of created um, the beginning and off and the end sort of call to action and stuff like that so yeah that, that's where Canva is good is that when you as I say, at the end of your video you might want a call to action something along the lines of uh, come to visit us uh, for grooming or something like that or, or follow us on Facebook something like that um, and that's ideal for doing that. You can create a lovely template with the colours that your business, you know, brand is, uh, and do that. Yeah, right. And then, um, let me just share again. Yeah. So that's that's it, mate. We're at, we're at the end. Um, so yeah. Um, just really a contact. I so say, you know, I, I'm here to help people. We, we are quite busy, but equally, you know, we, we, we like to help people. So you can contact me on any of these details. Uh, you've got my phone number there, which is my personal phone number. More than happy to take calls. Um, 
in my email, inquiries at motionprofit.com uh, and then my website. So yeah, contact me if you have any video related questions. Uh, likewise, you know, if you, if you want a video making or any editing doing, and then, then just feel free to contact us that way. And you also, you also hang out in the group, so you can answer, if it, anyone got any um, video related questions, then I can tag you in it for the answers, can I, so? 100% mate, yeah, anyone can tag me in. Uh, I, I follow a lot of groups, but your one, um, I follow quite well, I really like what you're doing, as you know, I've just spoken about this in length, but I think it's great. And, um, you know, I really think, certainly from a marketing perspective, uh, that there's some massive potential out there um, for groomers to, to, to do good marketing and to really stand out as a result of that. And, and in a couple of years' time, that will really push a business forward. So, you know, may, maybe there'll be a couple of um, cases where we can work with them, build, get them up and running and, and absolutely smash it and, and then show everyone else that, that do this because this works really well. Um, yeah, what I'll probably do is I'll probably put in that video that we, we made together about no life and trust afterwards so people can just have a a very quick look at what um what i want to use it for and how i'm going to hopefully go forward with it and uh sort of a very basic yeah. business yeah and that was and, and you know and this is the thing as well like i charge more per day for filming than i do editing and we you know we've got that one you know you charge more for editing and you know you film your own video and then you can get it for definitely edited there are people that, that will do it cheaper than me but it's um it's it's you know it's yeah, it's, it's great. Um, it is worth it. Like, I think I, we're going to take, I, I think A to Z is going to stand out. I mean, I think it already does very well, it? but I think it will really stand out when we, when we start really hitting the video. And um, I know that you're looking at more than that. Yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of video marketers will tell you video marketing is the way forward. What I would say to you is it wants to be part of your overall marketing. And we've discussed this, Bill, you know, you're going to do things like podcasts and, and that um, anything you can do to get your business out there is great. Video marketing should be a part of that, but it's not everything. That doesn't mean you're not going to put lovely photos on the group. It doesn't mean you're not going to put text on there. It just means that you want to be doing some video as well. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you for your time. You know, it was an hour and 20 minutes. Thanks for taking the time to come and speak to the group. And um, we'll put all your details uh, in the comments so that people do you want to contact you? They can, or they can just tag you in the group. So thanks a lot. And uh, thank you for the insights that you shared today. Yeah, nice one too, Bill. Talk of waffles, mate. I um, do want a bit, get quite passionate about this sort of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, nice thank one. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Take care.